everybody. Welcome to day 21 of Commit. Today's practice is about increasing your flexibility. We're going to be moving with intention as we focus on deepening each stretch on an exhale as we release tension. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stick around to the end for a pose breakdown from today's practice. Let's begin seated in an easy position at the back of our mats, hands on your knees or folded in your lap as you connect to your breath. Take your time moving to a tabletop position. Line yourself up and begin to warm up the body moving through cat-cow flowing with your breath. To a flat back, walk the hands forward, keeping the hips stacked above the knees, lower your chest to the mat in an extended puppy pose. Release, making your way back to a child's pose. Hips over heels, get wide through the sit bones, and find release in the lower back. Coming up to a kneeling position, send the right foot forward to a low lunge. You can keep your hands down on the mat or place them gently on your leg as you lean into the hips on an exhale. Bringing the hands down, send the hips back, keeping them up, straightening that front leg to a half split, keeping the toes down. Let's point those toes up now. And coming forward, send the right foot over to the left side in a pigeon pose, squaring the hips off to the mat. Get long through the upper body before folding over that front leg. Releasing pigeon pose, let's press back to a child's pose. 
once again getting wide through the sit bones, finding release in the lower back. Coming up to kneeling, send that left foot forward to a low lunge. Half split, keeping the toes down. Now pointing those toes up. To pigeon pose with the left leg forward, get long through the back before folding over that front leg. Releasing pigeon, press back to child's pose. through table to downward facing dog. Walk out the heels here if you like and make sure that you are pressing the front of the mat away from you through the hands to stretch the upper body. Facing forward, walk to the front of your mat in a forward fold. Inhale to a halfway lift, flat back. Exhale, forward fold. Allow the arms to get heavy here. Small bend in the knees, engage the legs as we roll up to standing one vertebrae at a time. Coming to mountain pose. Bring the hands together at heart center. Deepen your breath. Clasping your hands behind your back, step the right foot back, lift the chest and fold forward from the hips to an intense side stretch, allowing the arms to raise up as we open the chest, bowing the head down. Engage the legs, lift the body, widen your stance as you transition to a warrior two pose. Straighten the front leg to triangle. Bending that front knee and rotating to the front of your mat in a crescent lunge. Floating the right foot up to meet the left, in a mountain pose, hands to heart. 
clasp your hands behind your back step the left foot back this time intense side stretch we raise the chest fold forward from the hips allow the head to get heavy as the arms raise up Engage the legs, coming up, widening our stance and opening to a warrior two pose. Straighten the front leg to triangle. Rotating to the short edge of our mat to a crescent lunge. Float the left foot forward to meet the right in mountain pose, hands to heart. Stepping your feet as wide as your mat, toes turned out. Lower the hips to a garland pose, lifting through the chest, getting long through the back, we can bow our head slightly forward here, tucking the chin to get longer through the back of the neck if it feels good. Placing our hands down ahead of us, step the feet back to a plank pose. Arms in at the sides of the body, lower down to your belly with control. Forearms down, parallel to each other to a sphinx pose. Elbows stacked beneath the shoulders. We're getting long through the front of the body, opening up, long through the neck, shoulders down and away from the ears. Position your left arm in front of your body now for support. As we bend the right knee and reach for the right foot with the right hand, drawing the foot in towards our hip as much as we can to a half frog pose. Release, let's switch sides. Left hand to left foot. Release, returning to your belly. Bending both knees now, reach for both feet. We're gonna be going into a bow pose. Big inhale, and on an exhale, lift through the chest and the knees as much as we can, staying long through the front of the body. And release. Press back to a child's pose, taking the time to rest. Make your way up to a tabletop position. Cross your feet at the ankles and then sit back, extending the legs together ahead of you in a staff pose. Make sure you're sitting comfortably. Inhale, arms up, keeping the back as flat as possible and leading with the navel to a forward fold. Once we've lowered as much as we can, we can round out the shoulders, hands can reach for the toes, the feet, the ankles, the legs, anywhere you want to position your hands is good here. Coming up from our fold, keep the right leg extended and place the left foot along the inner edge of the right thigh. Keep the right toes pointing up. 
Square your shoulders off to the right foot and fold over in a single leg head to knee pose. Coming up, switch your legs, extending the left, drawing the right foot in. Square your shoulders off to the left foot, toes pointing up, and fold over. Coming up, both legs out to a seated wide angle position. Place your hands down ahead of you and keep your back straight as you begin to slide the hands forward as much as you can here. If you're able to, you can come down onto your forearms or fold forward. Coming back up, we're going to go into a fire log position. Bend the right knee, shin parallel to the long edge of your mat. We're going to stack the left leg above it. Knee over foot, foot over knee, as much as we can. It's okay here if there's still a bit of a lift in the top knee. Let's do that on the other side. Left leg on the bottom, right leg on top, shins parallel to the long edge of the mat, stacking knee over foot, foot over knee. Releasing fire log, let's make our way down onto our backs. Drawing both legs up to legs up the wall pose, allow them to just hang out here. You can stay here or move to a plow pose. We're gonna raise the hips and send those feet back overhead. You can keep the feet above the mat or if you can, touching them all the way down. You can keep your hands on your lower back for support or release them down to the mat. Try to keep your legs as straight as possible as we lengthen through the entire back of the body here. Releasing with control, extend both legs together down onto the mat, pointing through the toes. Place your hands beneath your seat on either side, elbows out to the sides. Press through the forearms as we raise our chest up high to a back bend, allowing the head to drop back lightly to a fish pose. Lifting the head to look towards the toes, lower down onto the back and release the hands. Slide the left foot up on the mat. Grab hold of the right big toe with the right hand and extend the right leg up as straight as you can. Place the right ankle over the left knee and draw the left leg into chest to a reclined pigeon pose.
release both feet down onto the mat. Draw the left leg in, grabbing onto that big toe, extend the leg. Position left leg over right and draw the right leg in to a reclined pigeon pose. Release both feet down onto the mat. Keep the right knee bent, extending the left leg out long. Left hand guides the right knee over to the left side of the mat in a twist as we gaze over our right shoulder. Try to make sure that both shoulders remain grounded in this position. If we begin to lift through the right shoulder, come out of the twist just enough so that it touches back down. Take your time returning to center and repeat that on the other side. Right hand guides the left knee over to the right side of the mat as we gaze over our left shoulder. Slowly coming out of the twist, press yourself up to a seated position, taking the soles of the feet together in a bound angle. Holding onto the feet or the ankles, engage the legs as you draw the knees down towards the mat. Sit up tall, shoulders down and back, chest lifted, deepen your breath. Release the legs to any comfortable seated position of your choosing and take a few deep breaths here to finish up. A seated bound angle position is a really great stretch to open the hips after a long day of sitting, whether that be at your desk, driving, or sitting on the couch. You'll notice that little kids have a really easy time getting into this position, and that's because they tend to have much more flexible hips than we do as adults, after having spent so much time sitting and hanging up in the areas that are required to be open for this pose to sit. So this is a pose that can actually be quite difficult for a lot of people, especially if we're focusing on proper alignment. And so proper alignment in seated bound angle means that we are bringing the soles of the feet together. And then the connection to the ground is being pressed down. So the outsides of our feet are connecting firmly with our mat. We wanna draw the heels as close to our sit bones as we can bring them. If you have knee pain or previous knee injury, you wanna push your feet a little bit further away from the sit bones until you don't feel a pinch or any pain in the knees anymore. Otherwise, we're gonna draw the heels in close. So we can hold on to the feet, 
We can hold on to the ankles, to the legs, or wrap our peace fingers around our big toes as we sit up tall. So it's very important in bound angle that we sit up tall and that we're not pulling forward here and rounding out through the back. And so what can happen a lot in this position when we're not quite open yet is that if we're trying to hold onto the feet or onto the toes, it forces us to round down here. And if that's the case, you can try taking your hands to your ankles or your legs if that allows you to straighten up a little bit more. And now once we're here, we want to lengthen through the inner thighs as we engage the outer thighs, helping to draw those knees down towards our mat. So we're going to avoid moving around too much in this position and we're just going to hold it and focus on drawing the knees down, sitting up tall and breathing as we allow gravity to help us open the hips. This is a fantastic pose, like I said, just to find that release after so much sitting. You can even watch TV in this position for up to five minutes every day if you find that you're particularly tight from sitting. Now, if you find that your knees are much higher than your hips, we want to sit on something that's gonna raise our hips up to allow us to open up in the upper body. So you'll notice here, if, if you're in this position and your knees are a little bit higher and you have a hard time dropping them, it's a lot of pressure on your hips and a lot of pressure on your lower back. And that's not what we want in this pose. We want everything to open up. We want to release the back, we want to release the hips, and we want to release the groin. And that just can't happen if we're not there yet, if we don't have that flexibility. So sitting like this is not really going to help you. You're not going to gain much benefit from it if your knees are much, much higher than your hips right now. So what we're going to do, like I said, we want to sit on something that's going to bring our hips up and allow us to open up a little bit more through the groin, through the inner thighs. And so you have multiple options. Again, we have our yoga cushion, our meditation cushion, or just any cushion. And you'll notice that that really helps me draw my knees down below the hips in this position. And I find that I can sit up much, much taller here. So even if you find this pose comfortable without the cushion, you might find that you're getting even more of a release with the cushion. So I encourage you to try it out either way. Again, we can sit on a block, these handy, handy yoga blocks. It's not quite as comfortable, obviously, as a cushion would be, but it elevates the hips just the same and does the trick. You can do the same thing with a blanket or you might find that you need even more elevation. So you can even grab a stool or something as high as up to a foot and then just allow gravity to draw the knees down without putting pressure on them and without pushing down. Like I said, just let gravity do the work and try to relax. And so once we're in a position, whether we're sitting on the ground, on our mat, on a cushion, on a block, we want to hold on where we're comfortable lift the chest, draw the shoulders down and back. We're sitting up tall and we deepen our breath. And you might find that you're losing engagement through the leg muscles here as we tend to start to relax. And so on an exhale, we can draw the knees down a little more and allow the inner thighs to open up. If you find this pose comfortable and you want to deepen the stretch a little bit, we're going to lift through the chest, and just lean the body forward, and just leaning the body forward, even just an inch, you're gonna feel an increase in the stretch in the inner thighs. And so you can go so far as to lean much further, but we wanna focus to relieve pressure from the lower back, we wanna focus on keeping the back straight and the chest lifting here, so that feels really good. And, and that's it, so I encourage you to play around in bound angle. It's a very beneficial pose for our type of society nowadays. It's something that you can do every day. And don't forget to use the modifications or to use props to help you either modify as needed or increase the benefits of your practice.